In a close U.S. presidential election, Democrats fall short of securing the big victory some had anticipated. Following the French terror attacks, Foreign Minister of the UAE accuses Turkish President Erdogan of manipulating a religious issue for political purposes. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau walks back on his controversial stance on freedom of expression. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan announces plans to declare Pakistan's administered Gilgit Baltistan as the country's fifth province. China vows strong retaliation if the U.S. proceeds to sell arms to Taiwan. The unprecedented U.S. election campaign in the midst of an ongoing pandemic had numerous twists and turns. One thing is for certain, Democrats did not secure the big victory some had anticipated. Joe Biden's Democrats were banking on the support of Americans that may have been dissatisfied with President Trump's handling of the coronavirus pandemic. Suburban Republican woman who might take away their support and Hispanic voters. But the reality is different. Florida, including the county of Miami-Dade, which is home to 2.7 million people of Hispanic origin, supported Trump. Team Biden's plan to attack President Trump over his handling of the coronavirus also proved ineffective. According to CNN exit poll, the economy was the most important issue for voters in which President Trump polled better than Biden. Democrats also banked on Republican women in the suburbs. But the party found itself losing some of the districts it had gained in 2018 midterm elections with the help of women. France is considering appointing a special envoy to explain President Emmanuel Macron's stance on secularism and freedom of expression to Muslim countries fostering an anti-French backlash. Anwar Gargesh, the foreign minister of the United Arab Emirates, has supported the French president while accusing the Turkish president, Erdogan, of using a religious issue for political purposes. In a recent interview with German newspaper Die Welt, he said, as a Muslim, I feel offended by certain caricatures, but as a thinking person, I see the politics that are carried out around the topic. With his attack on France, Erdogan manipulates a religious issue for political purposes. The words of the French president were deliberately taken out of context. Minister Gargesh also said that the real goal of the Turkish president is to expand the influence of his country in the Muslim world, which already extends from the Gulf to the Western Mediterranean. Early this week, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau completely changed his stance on terror attacks in France. When asked whether he still condemns the drawings and display of Mohammed cartoons, Trudeau said, I think it is important to continue to defend freedom of expression and freedom of speech. And added, our artists help us reflect and challenge our views, and they contribute to our society. Does the Prime Minister believe that freedom of speech is essential to a democracy? Yes or no? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Yes, Mr. Speaker. I said that last week. I say that again this week. Nothing justifies the, uh, the uh, horrific violence we saw uh, at last week and over the past weeks. Nothing justifies violence. Nothing justifies terrorism. We will unequivocally defend freedom of speech. Uh, as I said last week, as we continue to say this week, and as I will say again next week, if the Honourable Member asks. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's original response to Islamic terrorist attacks in France attracted criticism from both provincial and federal party leaders after he said freedom of expression is not without limits. In disagreement with Trudeau, Quebec Premier Francois Legault said that the Prime Minister does not speak for Quebec and he must apologize to France. While the official opposition leader, Aaron O'Toole, had questioned Prime Minister Trudeau and asked, world leaders have been standing with President Macron and defending free speech. Why hasn't this Prime Minister? In the last week, world leaders have been standing with President Macron and defending free speech. Why hasn't this Prime Minister? Yeah. Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, last week... Like this week, we condemn unequivocally the terrorist attacks in France and elsewhere. We stand with the French people. We will always stand against terrorism, against violence, uh, and in defense of free speech and other rights we hold dear around the world. Earlier this week, Pakistani Prime Minister announced that he will declare the border territory of Gilgit-Baltistan as the country's fifth province. 
The area bordering China and Afghanistan is claimed by both Pakistan and India, but controlled by Pakistan since the War of Independence in 1947. India's Ministry of External Affairs said so-called Gilgit Baltistan was an Indian territory and the declaration of the region as a Pakistani province was an attempt to camouflage an illegal and forcible occupation of the area. Any action by Pakistan to alter the status of the militarily occupied so-called Gilgit Baltistan has no legal basis whatsoever and is totally void ab initio. China-U.S. relations have plunged to their lowest level in decades, with U.S. support for Taiwan now taking the front row. The U.S. State Department recently green-lighted Taiwan's purchase for four weapon-ready aircrafts and approved plans to sell harpoon missile systems worth over $2 billion. In retaliation, China's foreign ministry spokesperson, Wei Guoban, said that the sale of $600 million worth of armed drones to Taiwan interferes with China's internal affairs and undermines the country's sovereignty. The minister has urged the U.S. to cancel all such sales to Taiwan to avoid further damage to China-U.S. relations and peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. Recently, China's ruling Communist Party has threatened the use of force to annex Taiwan while stepping up military flights into the region as a warning. I stress that U.S. arms use to the Taiwan region is a grave violation of the One China Principle and the third China-U.S. joint communique, especially the August 17th communique. It grossly interferes in China's domestic affairs and gravely undermines China's sovereignty and security interests. I'm Julia Cosby. Thank you for watching the International News Channel.